Divine Truth Paget Messages Discussions Discussions of individual messages received by James Paget between 1914 and 1923 from large variety of spirits. This is session 1, part 3 of the discussion How Divine Love Enters the Human Soul, where Jesus and Mary discuss a message from Jesus given to James Paget on the 23rd of March 1916 which is the first of two messages about how divine love enters the human soul and the differences between the soul and the spirit and physical bodies. The session was recorded on 18th of July 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. All right. Do you want to continue? Sure. So you see, when the mortal dies, the only thing that dies and is left behind is the mere physical body. And with the spirit body survives all those things which can be said to be the real man, so far as the mind is concerned. Hence, man never ceases to remember and to progress and to know that he is a being which death cannot destroy or change into something that he was not before death came to him. Mm. And thus I answer the question, when a man dies, shall he live again? He never ceases to live, and his living is not a new life, but merely the continuation of the old life with all the things of mind and conscience that were his in the old life. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And now we're getting down to some of the real important facts about the matter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and really we've drilled right down into some of the details but mm. of, this, of the previous uh, parts of the message, but really you've... It feels to me you were leading to this point through yeah. in all in a long preamble. Basically, there's no need for resurrection. We never die. Um, yes. There's no such thing as death. Yes. And I, I, the only way I used the term resurrection in the first century was actually to do with the spiritual resurrection of the soul. And what I was talking about there was about the soul being resurrected into a condition where it can now gain immortality mm. when it lost it. Mm -hmm. And that's the only uh, way in which I referred to resurrection in the first century. It, it, it got distorted in the Bible, obviously, and as a, as a result of the distortion, there's all these false beliefs that came up about the, the, the way the um, physical, material, uh, spiritual and the soul-based connections were all constituted. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's a sad result of misinterpretation of information. Mm. Um, the reality is that in the first century I knew this to be the truth, that I would never die, mm -hmm. and that my physical body, while it would die, um, myself, the real man, the, the person who I was, would remain and continue to remain thereafter. And that was the same for everybody. And, and the main reason why I uh, returned in a body that I made afterwards was to demonstrate to the people who didn't have much faith in what I was saying that that was a truth. Yeah. And unfortunately, my return in a material body um, was misinterpreted as a resurrection in a material body, unfortunately. Mm. And it's often referred to as the resurrected Christ or Definitely. a resurrected body, uh, which is not a proper way of referring to it. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. All righty, do you want to keep going? Sure. Yeah. In the purely spirit life, the spirit body continues to contain the soul and will be its protector and coverings so long as that spirit body shall last. But this body then begins to change, and by disintegration into what we may call spirit elements and the formation of new elements to replace the disappearing ones. This change in this body is not caused by the same laws that operate to change and disintegrate and replace the physical body, but by the law controlling the development of the soul, which the spirit body contains. Mm. So, <laughs> let's talk about, let's break it down. Mm -hmm. um, you say that the spirit body uh, is the covering and protector of the soul. Just to clarify, is that... Remember here we're talking about half of a soul. Yep. So obviously it can't be the covering and protector of the whole soul. Yep. It's a covering and protector of the half of the soul. 
And it's really not strictly correct to say it's the covering or protecting because the soul itself covers and protects the spirit body. Mm -hmm. But but it, it is a, a good way to say it in the sense of, and the reason why we said it this way, was that we wanted to demonstrate the relationship, again, between the soul and the fact that the spirit body yeah. was an important connection to the soul and was maintained by the soul, Yeah. right? And this was something that we wanted to illustrate. And is it also like, uh, say, in our physical form, for most of us in our conscious awareness, our physical form is our main interface with, with experience. It's the only f physical interface we have. With experience and in a way it's then the way that our soul is experiencing things. The world, yeah. The world. The, and the so physical universe. The physical universe. And so when we're in this spirit form now only, where we don't have a physical body, yeah. is it also a way of saying like, this is the soul's kind of covering. This is the soul's way of being the interface unit and yes. experiencing things. But in this case, it's an interface to both the spiritual and physical. Mm. So mm. the spirit body is able to interface with the physical still, but not in the same way. So, and if I can illustrate how that might be the case, for yeah. example, um, when you interface on earth as a person who's in the physical form, when the sun comes up, you see the sun coming up and it's light. The day, the day now is present. And then when the sun goes down, you see it turn into night where your physical sight is unable to see as much. And if there's no uh, you know, moon or anything, unable to see very little. Yeah. Right? And, and so the physical body sense of sight is still seeing the physical world and the physical existence in which it, in which it's surviving, mm -hmm. and it experiences life through it. Now, the beauty of of the night coming is that we then have the desire to close our eyes and sleep, yeah. Yeah. which means we get to experience another form of existence while we're asleep, and that's a part of our educational process. So God designed it that way. But the beauty of it is that is that now we have to sleep. And the night encourages us yes. to sleep. Yes, and the too. day encourages us to awake. Uh -huh. uh, now, of course, when we have lighting, it's a little different. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's normally the case. So there we are in our physical form, existing in the physical world, in the physical senses being, absorbing our physical sense of sight, seeing, and our physical sense of sight, unable to see under certain conditions, which are external to it. Right, so mm -hmm. this is a this is a way we're experiencing our life now. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say a spirit comes to Earth and he doesn't have a physical body. How does he see it? Well, how he sees it is now as a spiritual condition of Earth. Mm -hmm. So when he comes to when he comes to Earth, even though the sun is in full day, mm -hmm. he sees the Earth, depending on his condition, as a darkness. So but if he is dark himself, he sees the condition as if it's full day. Mm -hmm. So it's just relative to his condition that his sight now works. And is this what you were saying earlier about he's experiencing things now through his spirit body senses? Yes, so he's seeing, seeing the world through his spirit sight, mm -hmm. but his spirit sight is not attuned to the sun Mm -hmm. His spirit sight, or light in that regard, his spirit sight is attuned to spiritual light. Yes. In other words, the condition of love. Yes. So his spirit sight, if he is in a poor condition of love, his spirit sight will be attuned to a dark condition and he will see that as normal. Mm -hmm. Darkness is normal. Mm -hmm. right? if, a, if a bright person comes to earth and he sees the earth, he'll see it as the dark place. He'll be able to see everything still, but he will see it as dark. In, in a darkness, in a film of darkness. He, he doesn't see it as light, mm -hmm. like the sun. Mm -hmm. But when he's in the spirit world at his normal home, he sees that as the light of sun. Yeah. Because he's now in a developed state, receiving and in harmony with God's love, therefore able to see everything in harmony with the love that he's received. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual senses are attuned not to physical things, but rather to spiritual conditions yeah. 
And this is an important factor of our change. Very. And one reason why, in fact, many people who pass don't realize they've passed. Mm -hmm. mm, very important. Because they can't see the spiritual things still because their spiritual sight is attuned only to the physical things. So you're saying that their condition is so close to the overall condition of the earth. Yes. Which has... Which appears to them like a day. Yes, because it's, so you're saying there's a there's a relative um, the spirit for example the spiritual light inside of me mm -hmm. affects how I perceive spiritual light outside of me. Yes. So if there's not much spiritual light within me, yes, then I will see areas where there isn't much spiritual light collectively as normal, like I would see normal day daylight. on Earth. Whereas when I have a Spirit, more spiritual light in, in me, you. so which is really love we're talking yeah, about, more yes, loving more love than, than, than my surroundings. Yes. And I'm in my spirit form, yes. and it's a collective condition of love in my surroundings or spiritual light. Yes. Then I see it as quite a dark, yes. obscure You can sort still of see the detail. Yeah. Because your clarity of detail is not uh, is unaffected, mm -hmm. but you'll see the pervasive darkness of the spiritual condition. Yes. Yes. Now, what about if I have less spiritual light inside of me than my spiritual surroundings? Yes. Then you will hardly see your spiritual surroundings at all. So oh, it will be like blinding light? So it's or? very hard for a person who's in a dark condition spiritually to see a person who's in a bright condition spiritually. Mm. Very hard. Mm. And in fact, uh, depending on the brightness of the person who's in a bright condition, they may not see them at all. Mm. They have to show themselves to them. Mm -hmm. And remember, in a lot of our channelings, we've asked the spirits to show themselves. Mm. And one of the ways they've showed themselves is by detuning their condition further yes. so that the spirit can see, see them. them. Yeah. And presumably this is why it's even physically impossible for spirits in with not much spiritual light to actually tra travel and traverse areas where there's a lot. Yes. It's like it would be like being in a light of blinding. Uh, it would well, be quite it, well. It's even more insidious than that because you, you can't actually see it. Yes. So you don't know where you're going. Yeah. And obviously, if you don't know where you're going, you can't go. There. It's highly. It's very hard for you to go there. Yeah. You see it as a blinding light, yes, mm -hmm. but you can't see detail. Mm -hmm. So all it feels like is quite a scary experience. Yeah. In fact where you just see a blinding light and it's like trying it's like looking into somebody shining a spotlight at you very painful very yeah. painful to your yeah. own sight yeah. and something that you try to get away from yeah. you try to turn away from it you try to shut down to it mm. and this is why spirits in darkness often react in a fear-based way to spirits who are much brighter condition because you know the brightness of the condition causes the, the their uh, detail to be to be interfered with in their side, mm. and they cannot see who's behind it. Yes. And in many cases, they might think it's God or something very scary or yes. some kind of terrible thing that's going yeah, to happen yeah, yeah. to them. And because of their fear-based condition, they often believe that. Mm -hmm. And then they, of course, leave that environment. Yeah, and... Um... Oh, it just went straight out of my head. I know what I was going to say. It was something about uh, spirits. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. the way, I, the way, the way, uh, like this is this is uh, this sort of explains to people. We see a lot of people ask these questions like, well, "Why can't spirits see that?" Mm. Well, it's quite simple why they can't see it. Their eyesight is attuned to the spiritual condition of their soul rather than to the spiritual condition of their environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what I was going to say. You're making some very important points here about the way that our spiritual senses, which you've introduced in this message, mm -hmm. are very much attuned to spiritual light or spiritual darkness. And mm -hmm. this is what you said earlier about their capacities being affected by our condition. Correct. So you, so you imagine if you, on Earth, you can see something very clear, you've got really good eyesight, you see everything really clear, mm -hmm. you can see a long way in the distance, you know where you're headed, you know where you came from, you look behind you, you know where you came mm -hmm. from, you can see everything quite clear, you see the faces of people, 
not based on anything about their spiritual condition. It's only because you can see the light reflected. Mm -hmm. That's the way the physical eyes are constructed. It's a light sensor allowing you and your brain processes the upside down image and turns mm -hmm. that into an image you can recognize and, and looks, at, uh, looks at that image and adjusts it for, for your conception. Now, now you, take, you take that uh, light reflection away and instead replace it now with a spiritual reflection mm -hmm. of the spiritual condition of the individual. You can see that if the spiritual, con if your condition was really bright, you'd like blind me and be go, oh, I can't even see yeah. you. Or, I can't interact with you. I can't talk to you. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you hurt my eyes. You, you, yeah. you know, like your senses are now hurting, mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. as a result of the condition of the person. And so it's highly unlikely you will probably want to interact mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And then on the opposite end, if you you know, you've got a very really dark person and he matches your condition, you'll feel like he's good. I can see him. Yes. Yeah, we're mates. You know, yeah. I can see you. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to. Mm. Ironically, they might hurt you. But yeah. Because you yeah. see it as a person the same as your own condition, you believe not. And, yeah. uh, and this is also why a lot of people who pass in religions never find uh, religious truth initially because they often are attracted to the people they can see and the people they see have the same beliefs as them. Mm. And so therefore they're just hearing the same beliefs they have regurgitated mm. by another person yeah. and therefore not hearing any truth. And there's many spirits who claim to be Jesus, claim to be Paul, Peter and other prominent people on earth who go around falsifying their claims but because their condition is the same as the average person who passes, these people see them and believe them. Yeah. Which is yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Because they don't understand this basic fact. Yes. <laughs> which is and about spirit, fac spirit faculties. Faculties. And I, without going into more long discussion about it, that what you're saying about, say, you've used the example of sight very extensively there, it applies to all of the other senses in a very similar way. Hearing. Yeah. Same. Yep. So imagine the hearing. The hearing is going to be much more impaired of a person who's in a brighter condition than it is for a person who's in the same condition as you. Yes. So you're hearing even. You're going, oh, I can't sort of get what they're saying to me. I can't sort of understand yep. it. And you'll see that reflected in the Paget messages quite a lot where people say, look, uh, I've had Jesus was talking to me the other day, but I just couldn't understand what he was saying to me. Yeah. <laughs> but when you talk, I understand. Yeah. And that's because of the similarity in condition. Yeah. It's very much about resonance and frequency, isn't it? If mm -hmm. you, yeah, yeah, all of the senses. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah cool. Okay. Um, uh, yep. You said in that paragraph that the changes in the spirit body are governed by laws controlling the development of the soul and that these laws are separate from the laws that govern change in the physical body. Um so that seems to infer mm -hmm. that the changes in the physical body are not governed by these same soul-based laws. Is that what you mean? The changes in the physical body, remember I said, are governed by two sets of circumstances. They're governed by the physical laws themselves and the interaction of the soul with those physical laws. Yeah. So, so they're governed by two sets of things, not mm -hmm. just the one. So while, while that statement was made there, it, it's actually extended from that statement. Mm -hmm. The reality is that the spirit, physical, bo physical body, the physical material body on earth is still affected by the soul and its condition. Yeah. But there are a whole heap of things like your senses. And here we're talking specifically, remember, about the senses yes. rather than conditions. So yes. we're talking specifically about senses in the in this particular passage, passage yeah. and we need to maintain that context. Yes. In the context of your senses, there are like you know, your physical, like I said, your physical eye is it needs light to be reflected in order for it to see. Mm -hmm. Your spirit eye does not. Yeah. Right. Your physical ear needs air compression at different wavelengths to affect the hearing yes the the physical uh, the the drum needs a vibration in order to hear something and have it turned into something that the brain can make sense of mm -hmm. the spirit body's hearing does not mm -hmm. the spirit body can do that but also is a superset of that in other mm -hmm. words it can hear other things mm -hmm. it can for example hear a tree breathing yeah 
for example. Yeah. Right? It can hear thoughts, not just words, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Right? Whereas a physical hearing cannot do that. Yeah. Because the physical hearing is governed by a set of laws that mean that it cannot. So that is the case, even if the spirit body was of the highest possible development, mm -hmm. your physical sight is still only going to see the visible spectrum. Yep. And your sp physical hearing is still only going to hear the hearing audible spectrum. Yes. It's your spirit sight mm -hmm. and your spirit hearing that's going to hear far more yeah. than that when yeah. your soul is developed. Yeah. So let's say you were still on earth and your soul was highly developed. You could hear all these other things going on, plus hear what you would normally hear. Yeah. That makes sense. It does. And you could see what is all these other things going on, spirits and other things and all their interactions, plus see what the physical body sees. Yeah. And, uh, and this is why we say, I said here, the laws that govern the physical body are not governing the spirit body. The spirit body has a superset of that. It yeah. can do what the physical body could do, mm -hmm. but can do more. Mm. 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 But here you also, so basically we sort of summarise the dot points, if you like, till now. Yeah. You've basically made it very clear. Your physical body, there's three parts of man. The physical body is is just the most transient. Yep. <laughs> um, and when you pass, you enter this spirit life. Yes, but the spirit body was always in existence beforehand. Yes. But you just didn't know it. You didn't know it. Um, but now you're interfacing through it, through the spirit world, because it's a better thing to interface with the spirit world than the physical <laughs> body was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's a continuation. There's yes. a continuation. You've made and you're that just very the one clear. man. But now you're also saying that the, once we enter this spirit life, this now spirit body begins to change. Yes. But that is controlled specifically by not only the laws in existence in the spirit state, but particularly by the soul's condition. The soul's condition. So now everything is going to be an interplay between the law and the soul's condition. Yes. Yeah. Rather than just what the capacity of the individual faculty has. Interesting. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm. And another thread that's coming through this whole discussion is that basically you're talking continually about change, change, change. Yes. So it's very clear that God has designed us to be in a state of perpetual change. Because Yes, well, the whole concept of allowing the physical body to die, in fact, forces change upon us. Mm. And, and if you think about it, this is a very good thing because our spirit body is capable of far more than our physical body is. The change is obviously going to be uh, a good change, even though it might be painful in the initial phases. Yes. Um, the, the beauty of uh, enforcing change at some point, it means that we are forced into further growth that we didn't previously conceive mm -hmm. was possible. Mm -hmm. And to me, that, that's such a loving provision. So, so even though this physical body is capable of living a thousand years through the replication process being perfected, by the condition of the soul, is it advisable? <laughs> is the question. Because at the end of the day, um, obviously what you experience in your spirit state yes. is going to have a far a greater impact upon your life and a far more, it's far more, as, as I said here in this message, far more real. Mm -hmm. It feels far more real to the spirit state than the physical state feels. Yeah. So of course you'd want to live there eventually and no spirit, in fact, who I've ever met after they've passed has ever wanted to come back to earth. Yeah. Uh, except for the ones who did, based upon a condition of love rather than a condition mm. of experience. Mm. So it wasn't about uh, experiencing new things or going back to experience the same things, no. but rather a desire to teach love rather than uh, yeah. worry about a personal experience. Yes, because mm. they know that the... Once they're over that uh, initial, um, a lot of people find it quite traumatic to actually leave the physical body and the physical plane because they, they do. Because Friendships they have are here the, and they have so many. And... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <So funny. laughs> 
<laughs> Most of the time it's addictions that keep us here, isn't it? It but, is. Uh, and, but, uh, yes. And, 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 and some loves. Belief. Some loves, you know, like you know, might love a partner and you've yep. left the partner and you think yep. you can no longer be yep. with them anymore. And, yeah, false beliefs that have impacted Just, upon our sight. Even, mm. Yeah, false mm. beliefs. That this, that's all there is. So mm. tremendous amount of fear yes. as well yes. causing people to remain. But once people are over that, and people do get over that mm -hmm. and go into the spirit world. Nobody ever says, oh, gee, I wish I could go back and experience things as they were on no, Earth because no. things are so far enhanced. And this it brings us a bit to the teaching of reincarnation as, it, as it's expressed on Earth. It's only taught by quite dark spirits generally mm. as a result of the fact that they want to return back to Earth mm. because they believe it's the only possible way mm of progressing in the spirit world and that is not true yeah so you know belief again constrains their behavior and their action yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay uh, let's keep going we still we still how sure. far are we through our message about half of me <laughs> it's a bit faster now i think we've yeah, explained yeah. the basics yeah the soul is the real man because it, it is the only thing or part of man that may become immortal the only part of man that was made in the image of its creator and the only part of man that may become a part of the substance of its maker and partake of his divine nature. I say may, mm. for that is an important part of this great possibility. I know this possibility of the soul becoming immortal by partaking of the divine nature of God is true, for it is a proven fact in the case of many souls who are now in the celestial heavens. I also know that there are many souls in the spirit world who have been there for many centuries who have never received this divine nature and consciousness of immortality. Whether such souls who have not received this divine nature shall become or are immortal has never been demonstrated. This I do know, mm -hmm. that in the economy of God's plan for the forming of his kingdom at some time when I don't know, this privilege of partaking of his divine nature and the certainty of immortality will be withdrawn yeah. from the souls of men and spirits. And then, whether these souls who suffer this condemnation will partake of immortality, no spirit knows, only God. Yeah, wow. So... Now, most let's people are pretty back. confronted by a paragraph like that. Yes. <laughs> so let's go reasons. back and break it down. Yeah. So right at the start of the paragraph, you said, the soul is the real man because it is the only thing or part of man that may become immortal. Yes. So if the soul is the only thing capable of immortality, does this mean that the life of the physical and spiritual bodies that that life will surely end because it's the they cannot become immortal well what is not known is the effect of an immortal soul connected to a physical and material body or a spirit body and how long that bodies those bodies may be able to sustain themselves with mm. a soul that is immortal connected to them mm. so so questions like that as yet cannot be fully answered because there's no experience yet to measure the results by. We can only suppose. We can only suppose. So, so for example, is it possible that the physical body of a person who is immortal in the soul sense can die? Well, we don't know. Yeah, okay, so let's just, let's just backtrack a bit. Yep. Because here you're saying that just receiving God's love Yes. Makes us immortal. Makes him more, us immortal. Yeah. But it has to receive God's love to the point of becoming at one with God. At one with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are then immortal. We're then immortal. Immortal our soul meaning is immortal. Our soul can never die. Yes. It can never be broken down into its constituent parts. Yeah. Just like remember, death of the physical body is basically the physical body being broken down into its minutest constituent parts. That's what happens when we die. Yeah. And, and spiritually speaking, the spirit body may do that. We don't know, but the spirit body may do that. That's what, that is the concern of many people who are not immortal in the spirit world, who know they're not immortal. They are very worried that at some point in the future, the spirit body may die the same way the, spirit bo the physical body died. Yeah. And that is the spirit body be broken down into its constituent parts. 
But once the soul is immortal, in other words, connected with God's love, God's love is flowing to it constantly, it's impossible because it's received a substance from God. It now is a substance that can never go, can never pass. Mm. And so now that soul, although individualized still, it still has its own awareness of itself and so forth. It's not all of a sudden become the mind of God completely. It does have its own self-awareness and everything. It itself cannot die. Mm -hmm. It cannot be destroyed. And God can now not even destroy it because if God did, the soul, he would have to destroy a part of himself, right? Yes. So, so God cannot even destroy it. Mm-hmm. So now that soul can be said to be immortal. Yes. It is not known the effect that that will have on the spirit or physical body because you'd have to live forever <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to know what the long-term effect would be. <laughs> yep. And of course, anybody who's re- reached the condition of becoming immortal has not yet lived forever mm-hmm. because the the longest person who's ever been alive in this condition is 2,000 years, and nobody has lived longer than that in that condition. But say, for example, in you, in the first century, mm-hmm. you attained immortality while still in your physical body. Yes. Now, your physical body did die. Yes, but because of trauma by a third party. Mm-hmm. So it's potentially possible that the physical body, when attached to an immortal soul, will not pass. It's, no, well, it's only if it doesn't ex- exceed the capacities of its original creation. So in other words, yeah. if a physical body exceeds the capacity of its original creation, even if it's attached to a immortal soul, mm-hmm. it will die mm-hmm. because the physical body is only capable of so much trauma Yes, and it will die. Yes. It's not some magical thing that is capable of all sorts of things and repair itself like the movies show. Yeah, yeah. It is capable of a limited amount of trauma mm-hmm. and it will die, right? So even though it may live forever or for a long period of time, if it did not receive trauma, sooner or later, there may be trauma. Yes. And sooner or later, it would probably die. Yeah. Uh, but without trauma, it's potential it could live forever. Potentially. Yeah. But, 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 but again, that would is... be based upon the intention of that immortal soul. Does he want it to live forever? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does he yeah. need it? He doesn't yes. need it anymore. He doesn't yeah. need to use it. He's, he's experiencing stuff in the soul kingdom now. He doesn't, he, he, you know, coming back to the earth and experiencing stuff through that body would only be advisable if you were educating. Yes. There's no other real reason for retaining it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And presumably with the spirit body. Same applies. We don't really know. There's no need for it anymore. Once the soul has reached immortality, but in, but a, in, un- in a union state. state that's because you jump to the union state correct. immediately. And th- there's, a, there's a lot in between. That's there? right. There's, yeah. a, there's so many points of development in between. Once you jump to a union state. Now, at the time of the writing of the Paget messages, nobody had reached the union state. Mm-hmm. So we did not discuss anything about the soul's future. Yeah. There were occasional implications that we rose mm-hmm. in the Paget messages, but we didn't discuss in detail the implications of, of any future state because that was impossible to do given the fact that we hadn't re- reached the union state. Mm-hmm. So once the soul reaches a union state, right, which is a, which is a, uh, a, a state which is not uh, talked about in the Paget messages at all because it didn't occur yeah. at the time of the Paget messages had been written. Yeah. Once it reaches a union state, then it no longer really needs its spirit body either. Mm-hmm. And in fact, its spirit body may in fact be the only time it uses a spirit body is again in order to educate. And given the fact that the soul in a union state is capable of creating its own bodies, Mm -hmm. physical and material, Mm -hmm. it can create... Spiritual and material. Yeah, Yeah. spiritual and material. It can create and destroy bodies at will. Yes. So it is... In order to educate. So in that case, it may be possible that the spirit body dies. The one, the, the one the original created one. at conception yes. Yes. Might, die, might die and you might utilise other bodies. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I have done both of those things. Mm-hmm. I have utilised both bodies in the physical form that I created. And I, one of them I appeared to you in, in the first century. Yeah. And I've also created spirit bodies that I've utilised, multiple spirit bodies at the same time, 
that we've utilized to communicate with different people at different time in the spirit world once we reach the soul condition. So at the end of the day, you don't need the bodies, both yeah. spirit or material. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, also inherited in that statement, the soul is the only part of man that may become immortal. Does this mean the soul is not assured of immortality? Yes, of course, because the immortality is dependent upon the reception of God's love, the substance from God that turns a soul from being a normal, natural man into becoming a divine angel is, is the substance, God's love. Mm. And without the soul choosing to receive God's love, then the potential is that the soul may never become immortal. Now, of course, we don't know, like I said in the message here, we don't know uh, what happens to those particular people who do not receive, whether they get immortality or not. But, uh, you know, given the fact that the physical form um, only exists for a certain period of time and the spiritual form may only exist for a certain period of time, it just be a lot longer time. Mm. We don't know. Mm. Um, and we also don't know, you know, whether God's going to offer many opportunities you know, it's highly likely God will, but over maybe tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, God may offer opportunities, cycles of opportunities to receive God's love in order to become transformed. Hmm. OK, so now we're jumping ahead. Let's hmm. just let's just um, talk about this opportunity that God has given us to sure. receive her love. Sure. So that again, you've stated very clearly, this is an opportunity. It's not something that's assured. Yes. And remembering and that... And it's a gift. We can't expect it. Yes. <laughs> um, and remembering that this this message is really you starting to talk to Paget about how to receive divine love. This, this is immediately telling us something, isn't it? That it's an opportunity and it's not something that's assured or enforced. So that tells us that our desire and the use of our will is one of the most logically speaking not so much the use if we define will and desire as we define it in the third assistance sure. group it's primarily it's our desire, desire faith yep. Yep. and and of course the reception of uh, holy spirit about uh, and truth about humility mm -hmm. really it's our faith and humility that are going to determine how much of it we receive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay but just I just wanted to highlight that because you've introduced that now as a part of we'll talk a lot more about it in the next message that's right so let's now get on to this later part where you say that the economy of God's plan for forming of his kingdom at some time, mm -hmm. an unknown time, that the privilege of partaking of his divine nature, which is God's love, yep. um, and the certainty of immortality will be withdrawn. Yes. It's not a question mark. It will happen. Yes. So. Could you please explain why the withdrawal of the opportunity to receive God's love is a part of the economy of God's plan in the forming of his kingdom? Yes. So this is about the economy principles. Yes. And uh, the reality is God does not do anything unless, like, there's going to be a purpose to doing something. Yeah. So God does not offer God's love to people who do not want it. God only gives God's love to people who do want it. So, so let's, can I clarify? Mm -hmm. God doesn't, I understand God doesn't give it's her a, love. It's an economic it's, thing, isn't it? Yes. It's pointless trying to give it. something to somebody yeah. who doesn't want to take it. <laughs> yes. But you were saying it's not even on offer. If I'm sitting here going, I'm, I don't want God's love, it's not on offer. Well, no, there's a period of time now where it is on offer to those even who don't want it. Mm -hmm. But after a while, to assist the people who did want it mm -hmm. to continue to grow thereafter, mm -hmm. there has to at some point be uh, separations. The reason why, there's a number of reasons why, lots of, all to do with love, of course. Yeah. If you imagine you're one of the persons who has received God's love, mm -hmm. one of the very first things that you want to do is share the opportunity to receive God's love with other people. Yeah. You can't give them God's love because God's love is a direct thing that comes from God, but you can help them mm -hmm. open up to the concept that it is available, educate them and so forth about how that's available and help them to actually desire it. You mm -hmm. can do that. Now, 
the problem is, if you can call it a problem, is you spend so much time doing that mm. that um, you've also got to continue your own growth. Mm. Now, at some point in time, your own growth is going to get so far ahead of the people that you're trying to assist to grow that now you can't even communicate with them anymore. Yep. Your methods of communication are different. Oh, and just as you were the way talking you about live is the different. senses. The senses are different. The brightness is completely different. You get to the point where you're so well developed that it's not, it's not that you can't communicate because you can still communicate. They can't receive your communications anymore. Mm -hmm. Even though you can dampen your condition. and Even though you can do all of those yeah. things. But remember, every time you dampen your condition, you're no longer being the person you are. You're yes. now being a person for them. So, and this is, yes, keep going. Right. I'll so now, now love is uh, asks me to do all of these kind of things to help that person out. But how long do you help a person who doesn't want help? Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly, God has limits on how long you help a person who doesn't want help. Mm. And when I say God has limits, what I mean by that is God does not give her love to a person who does not want it. Specifically, does not want it. Yeah. God will attempt to help a person who has not yet decided yes. to receive God's love through other means. Mm -hmm. But God cannot give love to a person or help a person who does not want help or does not want the love. Right? That's an exercise of your own desire, your own passion to not want it. It's an exercise of will to not want it. God cannot force it upon you. To force it upon you would be an, act, an unloving act. Mm -hmm. So God can't do that either. So now there is constraints placed upon a person who's developing. The person who's now developed in love and become in union with God, now in union with their soulmate, now an immortal state and with their soulmate in an immortal state, in a union condition. Now that person is in a completely different universe. That's their primary function of existence. Mm -hmm. They are also in a completely different state. And they're also in a state that the person on earth or in a darker state is refusing to know anything about mm. by choice, even though they know it's available. They're refusing to know everything about it. Mm -hmm. So what God's going to do, God's plan is this. God's plan is to educate everybody that God's love is available. Mm. That's the first part of his plan. That means everybody in the depth of the hell will understand that God's love's available right the way through to any other condition will understand that God's love's available. But there will be people who still refuse it. Mm -hmm. right? There's people right now in a highly developed intellectual state in the sixth sphere who are continuing to refuse it. Mm -hmm. And people will continue to make these kind of choices and decisions because they're able, they have free will, they're allowed to. Now, once everybody knows it's available and the majority of the people who know are still refusing it, and the others who are refusing it have made all this progress into these other states. What happens? What happens? There's got to be, there's no reason through the economy of God to give God's love or to even offer to people who are refusing it. Mm. Economy dictates that you don't even give it mm -hmm. to somebody who's refusing it. Isn't yeah. that? That's what economy dictates. Yeah. So that's what's going to end up happening. Economy will dictate that God no longer offers love to people who continue refusing it. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, those people no longer have the opportunity to receive God's love. And from that point in time, the opportunity exists to the other people who have to continue progression beyond their current state without having to be concerned with people who have refused yeah. to make that decision. In other words, their progression should be much faster. Yeah and therefore much more experientially happy. So, so there's a lot of reasons why, both love for the people who have received it and love for the people who have not would dictate this particular event occur. Yes. So can I summarise, mm -hmm. highlight? Yep. So basically you're saying, and my feeling as well, is that God 
obviously God's desire is that we each become as happy as we can be and God has full knowledge that receiving her love is the way that we become most fully actualized and ourselves. Yes. And in fact, we, we can't even become our normal self without <laughs> yeah. receiving God's love, yes. really. And God's love for us is infinite. And so God really desires that for us. Yes. So from what you've said, God wants everyone to know, firstly, that the opportunity exists yes. to receive her love. And so the withdrawal would not occur before that has occurred. Yes. But two, God in her infinite love for us respects our desires and choices. And, yes. and so we'll absolutely respect if we say, I know it's there, I know I have this possibility, but I, I am saying I do not want it. Yes. And, and that's the main reason why the 14 have returned. Yeah is to present this opportunity for everybody on earth and everybody in the spirit world to come to know that it's available. Yeah. And, and once we have way. let everybody know that it's available yeah. and everybody has an opportunity to know it's available, mm -hmm. then our work is done. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. And as you said, once someone has received God's love, there is an immense amount of feeling that Wow, I would love for everyone to experience this. Yep. It's wonderful. Yep. And so naturally there's there's a if we think of progression like a a scale or going up a hill, mm -hmm. um, we we receive some of God's love and then we turn back and say, Hey, I would love to help you. Yes, you wanna you up. wanna lift or yep. help. Yeah. Or lift the others up into the same condition you're in, because obviously you're well, experiencing so happiness. much happiness and you can yep. feel that they are not. And yes. you would rather that they could if they wanted to, yes. you know. And so the way that I sort of see it at the moment is at the moment, everyone, no matter where they are on the slope, once they've received some of God's love, they're looking down. They're looking down. And this I'm speaking metaphorically. But they're looking, there's a part of their emphasis and attention on assisting other people to come up. Which is a natural state of love to do that. But uh, you can see also that it takes time and energy and resources yes. that could otherwise be used in different pursuits. Yes. Forward. Forward, because if we if we think about it like that, this, this like emphasis down the hill, if we reach a point where we say, look, Everyone knows that the possibility is there. And there's certain people who say, look, I don't want to go up this particular hill. And then we turn our attention up. There's, we don't even know the potentials of what might be created mm. by looking up that's and right. focusing all our attention on this upward progression. And that's not to say that we haven't already looked up no. uh, because obviously we have to make the progression we've already made. That's, that's what I was speaking very right. merit, but, merit, simplistically and metaphorically. But, yeah. And the reality also is that there is a lot of time and effort and resources being placed into helping people come to understand that the potential of receiving God's love exists. Yeah. And that you would understand is naturally the case. God would, of course, want everybody to know that the potential exists. Mm. Now, once this, this sort of uh, closing of the potential occurs because of the fact that um, people who have all the people have been offered and some have refused, and it might be, who knows, a lot, a lot that refuse. Mm. It's a, it's a shepherd, separating process, really, of, yep. you could call it sheep from goats, as <laughs> I called it in the first century. But it's a separating process uh, that occurs between those two potentials. So basically, one group has the potential to become the perfect natural man, but that's the limit of their potential. And whether that potential includes immortality or not will not be known, and I'd suspect not. Mm -hmm. um, based upon the fact that they haven't received a part of God in order for them to become immortal. The other potential is for the group of people that have, have received the potential and, and have engaged receiving God's love and what happens to them. The sheep, if you call them that. Yeah. Those people, what will be offered to them in the future? What kind of growth will be offered to them beyond their current existence? Well, there's a lot of things potentially that could be offered to them that are dependent upon receiving God's love to understand and to conceive and also to know. Yeah. Go on, you were going to say. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so 
I don't see it as sort of a, um, a like a, even one is better than the other. I, I see it. Well, one is uh, definitely better than the other. De <laughs> I don't. But I mean, in terms of worth and value. Uh, well, see, God still values the human. Like he values. That's what I mean. He values the person. But the reality is the happiness potential of one is far exceeds yeah. in terms of exponentially, <laughs> you know, billions of times greater yeah. than the other. Yes. So naturally, one condition is better. That's yeah. why it's going up the hill is like happiness, joy, contentment, fulfillment. Like we're further up the hill Experience, once we've received knowledge, God's everything, love. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it's like a oh, lost my inspiration. A division, um, and that these creative potentials, as you said, of what might happen when everyone who has received some of God's love focuses on that all their potential on on their potential yeah, yeah. Oh, focus all their effort on, on their, their potential. potential so at this stage we've focused some of our effort on potential and some of our effort on helping others yes, yes. and uh you know yeah. there's a mixture of those things occurring yeah and what i was going to say was we are as yet unaware of the potentials that will be created for those people who have said no i don't want it just through our focusing on potential and not on them anymore. Sorry, I'm not so, getting what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going <got> embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again <laughs> and you'll get it. Um, there's so many creative potentials that we are... For whom? ...yet unaware of for the entire universe that would result in a group of people who have received God's love focusing entirely on fulfilling the potential that God has created within them. Correct, yeah. But the potential may not exist for the people who have not received the love yes. and probably won't. Yeah. And the reason why that is the case is that you need the love to understand the potentials. The potential. Without exactly. the love, you can't even understand the potentials. Yes, exactly. So that So that indicates, obviously, that the people who are in the six fear state and remain in such, even though they have what they believe is happiness and a long life, yep. sooner or later, and uh, in the case of some that have lived tens of thousands of years or longer, you know, it's usually sooner rather than later, that they start feeling some level of dissatisfaction or discontent with mm -hmm. that condition, mm -hmm. understanding that there must be future growth, but they're just not somehow engaging it. Yeah. And, and so... Even though the opportunity to receive God's love this time mm -hmm. might be then closed off for a period of time, mm -hmm. who knows that at some point in the future, maybe millennia time, tens of hundreds of thousands of years time, there may be groups of people who now do want God's love. Yes. Who understand that hundreds of thousands of years ago it was available. Yes. It would be lovely if it was available again. Yes. And that then causes a whole series of events to occur that enables them to receive God's love at that time. Similar to what happened with you yes. 2,000 years ago. Similar to what happened with me 2,000 years ago. Yeah. But it is a fairly unlikely occurrence, given the fact that they are already in a perfected... I just need to have a coffee. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so it's a fairly unlikely occurrence, given the fact that they are already in a purely, like a very intellectually developed state. Yeah. And they're already receiving all this yeah. knowledge and information that they're refusing. Yeah. It's a very unlikely state that they will feel discontent. Yes. About their state. Yeah. So while it may happen, possibility wise, the, the re the the a reopening, the reopening of the closed of the celestial sphere yes. may happen in some point in the future. Yeah. It may, in fact, be many millions of years' time, yes. if at all, Yeah. because yeah. of the condition of the people involved. Yes. Yeah. So it is important to understand that, uh, you know, it's a, um, it's, a, it's a very, like, important time in human history to start, in, in, you know, not, not because we're threatened of dying, because we're oh. not, we're not threatened with dying. God oh. doesn't say you're going to die if you don't do what I want. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. But because the opportunity exists and it may not exist oh. and it may not exist quite soon, oh. depending on how many 
if as soon as everyone knows the opportunity exists and at that yeah. point in time the people who refuse have refused and they will no longer be offered the gift of receiving god's love but those who have clarification again those who have received it even in a small amount will continue to have that opportunity of course yeah of course because uh, because i've already received it they it cannot be close to them mm -hmm. because if they've already received it even a small bit it cannot be close to them yeah after that point in time yeah. if it was it would be a sacrifice of god's own love yes and that is not possible to occur god yeah. god won't can't do that yeah. So, so, of course, those people who have received some, even if it's a tiny, minutest bit, and it only has to be one half of your soul too. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be one half of your soul has received a little bit, then it will still be open to you. Yeah. Fortunately. Fortunately. It's yeah. a very loving thing. Both halves of the soul must refuse it yeah. in order for the refusal to be complete. Mm. Mm. Interesting, hey? Mm. So this is a pretty hot topic, this one. When I say, when you say a hot topic, well, it's, it's a topic most people don't want to hear about. It tends to <laughs> invoke a lot of strong emotions in people. This yeah, idea. usually a lot of anger, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, we find. Yeah. So I wondered how deep you want to go in discussing it because there, well, we I could think there's other messages the... that discuss it in more detail, yeah. which we can certainly do. Yeah. Um, you know, the reality is I don't feel there's much of a need to discuss it in more detail. Um, it's not a threat that God's putting upon people. It's an opportunity and, and it's a gift. We've got to see God's love as a gift. It's not yeah. something that we can demand. It's not something. And this is where I see people who get angry. They really don't understand gifts. No. Because if yeah. they understood gifts and, and uh, you know, they really like petulant children at Christmas time <laughs> who think they deserve a gift. And they, yeah. you know, they think that they should deserve the gift every year, no matter whether they break it or receive it or don't or don't value it or not. Yeah. You know, they think they should still keep getting new gifts. Yeah. And that's not how God works. God uh, gives gifts to people who appreciate them. Yes. <laughs> you know, and at some point we've got to understand that God's love is the most precious of all of God's gifts. Yeah. And at some point it's even more precious than life itself because life itself will only ever attain to the sixth dimension of existence, whereas God's love helps you attain much higher conditions of love mm. and, and therefore much higher conditions of happiness and joy. So it's much more precious than even life itself. Yeah. And so, you know, it's very, very important for mm. us to understand that gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This idea of it being a gift. Yeah. And I think, look, I think you've covered why it's loving that God would at some time withdraw the opportunity to receive Yeah, there's love. lots of reasons, obviously. Yeah. And if let's... you consider all of the principles that we discussed about yeah. understanding God's laws, every one of these principles is engaged in this issue of the withdrawal of the opportunity, including principles such as transformation, redemption, and including other principles such as hierarchy, governance, responsibility in particular, yes. and so forth, are all, in, are all truth and everything. You, you, you can't give more truth to a person who hasn't received God's love. To a certain point, yep. they hit the truth, they hit a truth boundary. Yep. And that's it. That's, that's all they can understand, really. And they can't understand anymore yeah. because God's love opens the parts of the soul that it enables understanding of different types of truth that weren't available to you when you just had your intellect. Yeah. So, so every single one of the principles is involved in this particular subject mm -hmm. and we need to understand it as a very important topic really. Yeah. And we need to get over our anger and rage and other feelings we have about, you know, God trying, you know, God making my life difficult and threatening me or whatever it is that you feel. When re really God's not threatening you, you still will, will you know, live, live, well, who knows, forever maybe. You just won't be immortal. Mm. And what immortal means is that you can never die. Yeah. Nobody can ever re remove you. So that's different mm -hmm. than living forever. Yes. Which has still got to potentially the possibility of being removed at mm. some point. And can you clarify immortality as we're defining it here? Is that having received God's love even just once or is it having received God's love to the point of the eighth sphere at one level? With well, once we one. receive God's love just once, we have a part of God's love in us. Yeah. So we're not immortal yet, 
Mm -hmm. in the sense we're not conscious of our immortality yeah. because we still have a lot of fears and other emotions inside of us that we need to release in order to become conscious of our immortality. Mm -hmm. Once we release those fears and other problems that we face, addictions and fears that we place, uh, we get to a state where we're now purified in God's love. We're now, we're now receiving God's love all the time. Yeah. And once you get into that state, you are now fully conscious of your own immortality. So consciousness of immortality begins when you first receive God's love once yeah. and ends. Like when I say ends, it, it, it's completed when you now receive God's love all the time. You're at one with mm -hmm. God. Now, in between those two states, obviously, is a state of growth. Yeah. And, uh, and a person may, at times, be conscious they are immortal yeah. during that phase and other times feel the fears that they have still kicking in and therefore, you know, stopping their ability to be conscious of it. What we're saying, though, is that anybody who has received God's love can no longer die. Yeah. whether you're conscious of your immortality or not. Or not. Yeah. But the beauty of consciousness of immortality is you now have a fearless existence. Whereas if you're not conscious of immortality, you don't have a fearless existence. Yeah. You've got to get rid of your fears yeah. to have a fearless existence. Yeah. And that's a part of the process of growth. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you for clarifying. Mm. Let, look, let's keep going. Yep. So we finish this before... Good night. Night time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, up to there are other things. There are other things, yeah. that's right. there are other things that I know and hear tell you, and among them is this: that so long as the soul does not receive this divine nature, the mind, which I have described as being a part of the spirit body, continues to exist and dominates both soul and body, and in its progress it may attain to a condition of purity and perfection such as were possessed by the first created living souls, our first parents. Many spirits now are in this condition, but yet are mere men, and their soul remains only in the image of God, nothing more. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so there you're referring to the natural love progression pretty much? Yes, but also this concept of intellectual dominance. Mm. Um, you see today it's, a, it's become a fashion to have an intellectual dominant life, mm -hmm. uh, trying to subordinate the yeah. desires and passions of the soul uh, by the mind. Mm -hmm. And some religious uh, orders, including Buddhism and stuff, mm -hmm. even encourage that. Yep. And, um, and, and unfo it's unfortunate because... because intellectual dominance is the mind of the spirit body dominating the operation of the soul mm -hmm. rather than the natural state which is the soul dominating yes. the operation of the mind yep. and so there are all sorts of problems that this uh, that this incurs to the soul and a lot of problems uh, um, that it gives to us in the in our everlasting life you know our life in the future after we passed including the fact that we become very intellectually reasonable while at the same time having no emotional faculties of reasoning. Yeah. So, so, so we have no emotional intelligence. Mm. And, and a person with no emotional intelligence and only intellectual intelligence becomes more and more devoid of happiness mm. in the end. Mm. And this is a sad fact of life in the spirit state. This is why sooner or later people become dissatisfied with it. Once they hit the sixth sphere, the developed natural love state, they become dissatisfied because they start realizing that they're not experiencing the growth of their emotional state, mm. their, their, their passions and, and, and feeling-based experience. And, as, and as, as a result of that, they also have a poor understanding of things yep. because there's no emotional intelligence. Yes. So, you know, nowadays I think people have started to engage the fact that there is such a thing as emotional intelligence and mm. that it is important mm. to develop it. And, uh, and that's the soul faculties that need yes. to be developed. Yeah. 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 So I feel that's a big important part of that message too, is to stop allowing this intellectual dominance mm -hmm. and, and, and use your logic, that's fine. God's given you reasoning faculties for a reason, and that is they need to be logical. Unfortunately, most people are not even using them very well. 
you know, there's a lot of illogical belief systems on the planet, including religious and atheism-based yeah. beliefs that are completely illogical, but we believe them because we want to. And we, and we want to use our mind to dominate. Um, we need to start allowing the emotional intelligence to kick in as well oh. as a society and start understanding the, the impact that has upon our future life. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, how um, very much logic and emotion are seen to be separate entities. And, and one needing to control the other. One needs to, <laughs> logic needs to, to dominate and subordinate emotion. And yet, I know from my own experience, the more I subordinate emotion, the less logical by anyone's standards I am. My and, the, and the less happy you are too, and right? And the less happy. <laughs> Whereas yeah. when I have an acceptance of emotion but don't let it drive me, yes, then I can employ logic. And particularly drive you, it's, it's important to not in, let it drive you in unloving pursuits. In a negative sense, yes. Yes, yes in a reactive sense. It's okay sense. if it drives you in loving pursuits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a fear-based or anger-based. or Yes. Know. But then when I allow that emotion, then I can employ far more logic yes. that is very logical. I make much better decisions exactly. that bring about not only my happiness, but more economy and more, more like lots of good things. Yes. So it's, it's not setting them up as antagonists, no. but rather that they can work in unison. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very important part. Yeah. yeah. Very important. Yes. Okay, now, good. I don't know about you, but I'm getting yeah, quite I'm tired <laughs> from this discussion. Perhaps uh, I'm thinking perhaps we make this a session one yeah. and we make the next part of the discussion from the... Because now we sort of... The message sort of changes and discusses God's yeah. mind and God's spirit and God's soul. And there's a whole heap of things that that also... Um, brings about that we need to discuss as well with yeah. regard to how God's soul interacts with our soul and these kinds of things yeah. and and it could be quite a long discussion there so yeah, it's in and so, of itself so yeah. perhaps what we need to do is just <laughs> pause our pause discussion out at there. this stage let's do it and uh, and then have that discussion the ne next discussion that we have about this because there are quite a number of quite complex uh, principles we need to talk about yeah. there as well. And then we'll move on to the second, the second message. Yeah. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and passion in discussing this. Yeah, all well, the stuff we, we know for years, yeah. but it's been like it's so good to be able to discuss it more. Yeah. And also it's interesting when you discuss uh, things. I know that many of our listeners... You, you will probably, for many of you, you will probably go, oh, well, now that we've seen that assistance group number three, which is about the understanding God's loving laws, now I can start to understand this a lot better than yeah. what we could have understood it before. And this is the beauty of uh, an ever-expanding knowledge of mm. things, even intellectually, is that you start to get a bit of a sense emotionally too of what that means rather than just sort of trying to grasp it all, you know, through some intellectual conundrums that you're mm -hmm. facing and eventually resolving them, you can start to connect with, or a lot better connect with, the, you know, what was meant or intended to have mean when you read the packet messages. Yes, and I think that's another side benefit. And, and perhaps I should have mentioned at the beginning about... Um, just the fact that some of what we were going to discuss, a lot of people think that they've already heard and understood before, mm -hmm. but the truth is that as we open up emotionally, as you just said, these truths become far more significant yeah. and we have, we have far more, even just the realisation of how much we're focusing on our physical body. I know in the last couple of years, as I've mentioned to you, I've gone through this whole process of becoming more aware of just how little importance my physical body has in comparison mm. to all these other far more serious spiritual matters. And yes. so I was excited to, some of it might seem a bit dry to talk about spirit body, physical body, all that again. No, I don't think so. But, it's dry, but anyway, I don't but, know why uh, you keep calling it dry. dry. You know? <laughs> I yeah. think it's quite it's, important information to understand. Yes. And if people truly understood it today on the planet generally, you could see a uh, medical profession would advance in a whole heap of other areas. Uh, you know, self-development programs would advance in a whole heap of other areas. Things like alcoholism and other, you know, problems that exist on the planet, drug abuse, alcoholism, all these other things could be much more easily solved. Things like 
things like you know intellectual impairments would be looked mm. upon differently death would look be, be looked upon differently mm. there'd be much less of a tendency towards war and yeah. a much higher priority on resolving problems through you know other other methods yeah. and, and like it has an effect on every aspect of our life if we had a different outlook yeah so i feel it's such an important thing to understand for that reason absolutely yeah mm. yeah so thank you again for mm. for the message and for the discussion yeah, today probably, yeah. and thanks everyone for joining us today yep. hope you enjoyed the discussion i've enjoyed our, our discussion yeah. today yeah. our first yeah. discussion for 2017 <laughs> yes we we've been actually very busy behind the scenes haven't we have we? Been, yes. we've been doing a lot of work on a lot of projects that will come to fruition in the next couple of years. So yes, and, we and we've been preparing a lot of material and yep. and so forth, and we've still got a lot of preparation to do. So we probably dribble out some stuff <laughs> once every week uh, or so. We'll probably yeah. do one of these or tw two of these sessions a week and get some for information out for the next few months. Yeah. But uh, there's still a lot of behind the scenes work we're trying to do to, to get things ready for yeah. what we feel need, yes. we need to get ready for the future. Yeah. So, uh, so that a lot of our time will still go there. Yeah. yeah, but it's lovely to get back and just talking about truth. It yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, darling. Yeah, thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, and thanks, uh, Lena thanks and Eloisa. Lena and Eloisa out the back there for us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See you later. See you.